Welcome back everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about creativity. We're going to talk about possibilities and limitations. So this here, this is kind of a piece of junk. This is a camera called the Great Wall. This was the fourth in a series they made. This was the Great Wall DF. These were made in China in the 1980s and it was a copy and not a great copy of some other cameras that were popular at the time, but it's a medium format camera. It's an SLR. There's a mirror in the side. When you take the picture, it flips up this entire mechanism. Yeah, it's a lot going on. Better not be picky because there's exactly four shutter speeds, none of them accurate in the bulb setting. You do have some aperture options. And you can focus using this awesome mirror that just flips to the side. This is the Great Wall. And this was also my main camera for about four years starting around 2000. I had no money at the time. Everybody that I knew that was really into photography, if you were a studio photographer, you were still shooting film a lot in those days, but you would have Hasselblads. If you did travel or sports, you would have the flagship Nikon or Canon. And that was just so out of my league. So I kind of resulted to these cheaper cameras for a long period of time. And this is what I want to talk about and how this impacts creativity. There is a method to all this, but real quick, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor today who are the awesome folks over at squarespace.com. If you need a website, portfolio, or online store, Squarespace have you covered with an all-in-one solution for building beautiful websites. Their award-winning templates will get you started and you can use their drag and drop interface for quickly building a website that you can be proud of. So head over to Squarespace and sign up for a free trial. And if you decide that Squarespace is right for you, you can use offer code AOP on checkout to save 10% on your order. Once again, that offer code is AOP. And I want to give a special shout out and thanks to the folks at Squarespace for sponsoring another episode of The Art of Photography. So what does shooting on a cheap camera with very few options have to do with creative process? Well, I think it has a lot to do with how your creative process can be influenced. I have talked about the Holga and that was a camera I actually had before this one. The Holga is a plastic camera that has absolutely zero options. When I discovered the Holga, the first time I shot it, I thought, well, this is weird and gimmicky and it feels like a toy. And then I realized, wow, look at all this stuff it can't do. You have one shutter speed, you have one aperture. The only way you can change or have an effect on your exposure other than the lighting that you're in is the film that you choose. That's how you change your ISO on a roll to roll basis. And so as soon as you figure out all the things that it can't do, you start to question the possibilities of what it could do. And that's what opens up more creative avenues for you. Well, the Holga is an extreme case. That is a really limiting camera with so few options. And so I had a friend at the time who had one of the great wall cameras from China. And I thought I want to get one too. So I really loved her work. I found one on eBay. It was about 60 bucks and it's a little more the same, but you get some options. But once again, you start to discover, well, there's a lot this camera won't do. So what can it do? And then when you really want to go crazy, I like I've even shot macro on this. It's got a 90 millimeter lens for medium format. And I've discovered that, hey, you know, the old trick, you take the lens off turn it over backwards, put it on the top, instant macro. So there are possibilities. And I love the fact that this camera was so janky that I could just get around them and experiment more. And today, when I look back at the body of work that I produced back then, I was developing a lot of film myself. I was shooting just like all the time. I would stay up half the night processing. And there's a body of work that I did with a very crummy camera that still holds up in my eyes and I'm still very happy with. So let's for a second look at where we are with technology today, because I think we're in a very very interesting place. There are more options open to us as photographers than we've ever had in the entire history of photography. And I think in the last 30 years or so, there's been a series of big developments that have led us up to a certain point. I think the first one was in the 1980s when we had autofocus introduced. Minolta was the first to do that, followed by Canon and Nikon. And all of a sudden that opened up things that you could do with a camera that people couldn't do before, because all of a sudden the camera was taking over this functionality of autofocus. The digital revolution was another big one. All of a sudden you didn't have to have film to capture an image. You could do it digitally. It was a faster workflow. It had arguably a higher quality, not so much in the beginning, but it moved in that direction. That was another big deal. I think a couple of years ago when DSLRs, live view, all of a sudden you had this video component. That was another hint at what was to come. And really in the last two years, the craze with mirrorless has just taken us in this entire new direction with both medium format and with what we can do with full frame APS-C. The whole idea with mirrorless is you get this full-time data readout from the sensor and what you can do with that. Look at Sony. They're absolutely killing it right now with autofocus. And that's a huge boon to sports photographers, wildlife photographers, people who need that kind of speed with autofocus. And what I'm saying is if we look at the landscape, we are in a point right now where we have more possibilities in front of us than we've ever had in the entire history of photography. Now, another thing about the history of photography that I want to add in here, my friend Keith Carter loves to say this, and I agree with him that throughout history, 
you've always had a new process that comes along that follows the next. And the interesting part is none of those processes have ever replaced something that's come before them. So I think that within few exceptions of films that you can't get anymore, you have access as a photographer today to the entire history of photography in terms of process and what you want to work in. You can do cyanotypes, you can do gum bichromates, you can do platinum palladium, you can do tintypes, you can do collodion, you can do all kinds of things. And the reality is, is most people don't look at that as a creative thing. They look at it as a lot of options. And so therefore, very few people actually do those things. They become very specialized. And this is where things start to get a little bit interesting. So obviously, I have a huge passion for photography. I've made 10 years worth of videos on the subject, and I hope that I can be inspiring and share that passion with you guys. One of the things that I love about photography is it encompasses a lot of different disciplines. There's an art side to it. There's conceptualism. There's pictorialism. There's straight photography. There's landscape photography. There's product photography. There's forensics. There's utilitarian types of photography. There's a lot of different types of creative avenues that you can incorporate into what we umbrella as photography. There's also a technical side which is really amazing too. In the early days, this was chemistry, this was paper, this was optics. And then later we introduced sensor design and engineering and science and math. And we get into computers and all the things you can do with digital files. And that's what I love about photography is there's such a wide breadth to what exactly is defined by that word. And I think that's what makes it really cool. Now, on the other hand, we obviously have a technical side of photography and we have a creative side of photography. And from my perspective, and this is just my opinion, I think throughout history you tend to see an ebb and a flow with this, all the way back to the earliest days of photography when the boat shows up with the recipe on how you make an image and people go for it and people freaked out. They thought, well, this is this is not art. This is a technical thing where people who can't draw, all of a sudden you can capture an image. And then photography went through this period of pictorialism where we spent years and years trying to get photography accepted as art. Once that took over, you have Ansel Adams, Group F64. They come along and they're like, well, no, no, we don't do any of that picture painterly stuff. We do straight photography. It's just an interpretation of the scene that's before you. But then Ansel Adams worked in the darkroom and pioneered in all these aspects of manipulation. So it's this ebb and flow of we have technology and we have the creative side. And this is one of the things that I think makes it really interesting. But when we get to the modern age, I think right now we've had such a presence with technology, especially in the last year, that we don't see that creative side. And I've done videos on this before, and I think a lot of that has to do with we haven't explored all the possibilities to figure out what we want to go beyond. We have too many things open. Now, when we talk about creative work, this is what becomes interesting. And I think if you talk to anybody who's in some type of creative work, be it writing, uh, design, photography, they're all going to tell you something similar, that creative work tends to flow when you have parameters to work within. In other in other words, you have things that you can't do. You have roadblocks. You start to define where it is you're living, and then you look at the possibilities, like I mentioned on those earlier cameras, of what can I do with this? And that's when your creative thinking starts to kick in, and that's when you find your voice in something, you find something that hasn't necessarily been done before. You have a new way of looking at something, and that's when work tends to become creative. And so I see definitely a pull on both sides of this, from the technology side and the creative side, but this is where I want to know what you think. You know, I've done this show for a long time. And I am in a very fortunate position where I have relationships with camera companies that let me play with some really nice equipment that I get to share with you guys. So this last year, I've worked with Hasselblad, I've worked with Sony for about two years, Fujifilm, so on and so forth. One of the things that breaks my heart every time when I see it is when I do a review on a camera and somebody leaves a comment, basically the gist of, oh great, another piece of equipment I can't afford. And I read that, and maybe I'm wrong on this, but there's an implication that the budget somehow is holding them back from making something interesting. And I don't think that's ever been the case. You've got to use what you've got. You've got to learn how to get the most out of it. And that's when things start to happen. And so it really makes me sad to see comments like that because it's never been about that. I just showed you a camera that a body of work that I shot on it with is one that I'm still proud of to this day because I was thinking with it. Another interesting side note here is that recently, like about a year ago, I took every image that I've ever taken and I have loose hard drives all around the office and I got it all onto a RAID drive, got everything backed up. It's this massive collection. But what I love is in Lightroom, you can go in and you can create virtual folders and you basically say, I want a folder of images based on this criteria. So you can say, I want all the photos taken on this date or I want all the photos taken with this camera or this lens. And it's extremely 
extremely useful for me and what I do. What was interesting is a couple days ago, I thought I've never done anything with iPhone images that I've took and I wanted to go back and see some of the crummiest iPhone images. Well, I look, went back and my first phone that I ever had was the iPhone 3G, did not have a great camera and you can tell, and it's interesting because I couldn't see any of this at the time, but when I go look at that body of work, early on, I shot very little with it that would be serious. I used it for utilitarian purposes or goofing around and then every now and then you'd see something where I was in a location where I didn't have access to my camera and I would start using it because I wanted to capture something. So I started using it as a camera. And the iPhone, the original, or not the original, but the 3G, the first one I had, it had a lot of limitations. Again, you know it has terrible dynamic range. You know that it does not do well in low light at all. You know the color representation is a little bizarre. So you start to look for opportunities with overcast skies and limited lighting where you can actually create something that works. And as I go through those images, you see a point where I started to hit that stride. And like I said, I couldn't see this at the time, but what I see now is my thought process back then. There were also also moments where there are images where you just learn how to embrace the fact that all of your highlights are going to blow out and you do something in black and white. I mean, there's ways to interpret stuff and work around things. So I want to hear from you guys. What do you think is holding us back? Where do you think we are in the grand scheme of photography these days? I feel like in many ways, and probably because it's on my side of the camera, I do a camera review. Everybody wants to see it. I do something on real photography or creative thinking, and nobody really watches it. So I think that's definitely the trend of where we are now. But how does it impact you creatively? And what brings out your best work? I want to know below. See you guys in the next video. Until then, later.